Welcome to Art to Link Tech Series. Art to Link is a consulting firm specializing in integration. In this episode, we're going to talk about BizTalk as an enterprise service bus. So, what is an enterprise service bus? To answer that question, we're going to give an example. Our example is going to consist of two organizations. One organization is going to have an enterprise service bus, and the other one will not have one. The organization that does not have the enterprise service bus will use a methodology, a conventional approach for integration. The, the organization that does have the enterprise service bus will be an organization that will adopt a BizTalk server as its enterprise service bus. OK, so what is or who is an organization that does not have an enterprise service bus? What is a conventional type integration? Organizations that don't have that adaptation, they, ha they do the typical integration where a system is integrated to another system directly. What does that mean? So for example, if I have a database that holds a data warehouse and I have another system, say for example, a, a CRM and needs to interact with this system, what do I do? I create a custom connection between these two. I may create a script. I may write a custom application. I may put a scheduler so that these two systems can integrate between each other. So then you may end up having a CRM, an ERP, and you may have databases around. You have may have reporting. You may have uh, a variety of different systems in your organization, and they all need to integrate each other synchronizing data, uh, basically talking to each other is what we call it. And so this is a typical organization where, again, no enterprise service bus is adopted. And so you have all these systems talking to each other. So imagine you have, let's say, one, two, three, four different systems, right? And so when they all need to talk to each other, look, it, it'll end up looking like a spider web. So what are the disadvantages of, of this scenario? This scenario basically means that for each system that you need to integrate from and to a system, you have to create two new interfaces, essentially. One from the source system, one from the destination, when they need to talk to each other. Again, for every single one of them, you're going to have to create a new interface, new application, new script, whatever that may be. You might be able to copy some of the existing code if you've done something similar between the two, but essentially that means an entire new uh, in the phrase for each of them. So for a moment, let's focus on the organization that it is implementing BizTalk as an enterprise service bus. That organization will typically create interfaces and only one interface between these systems and the bus. So the bus is basically one system in the middle, and these systems will connect to it only one time. And so all the data that this guy will go to this will go through the bus, and if it needs to get a copy to this other guy or this other guy, we'll do it, but the bus will manage that. The advantages of this, or some of the advantages, are the fact that you build only one interface against each system, and you are able to make copies or create multiple subscriptions to this publishing type system. So let's focus on one particular new terminology here for a moment. The terminology we want to learn this time, it's called the concept of publishing data and subscribing data. So the publisher is the system that provides the data, and the subscribers are the systems that are going to consume it. For the organization that does not have the ESB, the publisher, yes, it's the system that provides the source data, and the subscriber is going to be the system that's going to consume the data. And this is always and only always one-to-one -one scenario. So the organization that is implementing the ESP will have one publisher and potentially multiple subscribers. And that means that you can have one interface connected to the bus and one or more interfaces configured on the subscribing model. For the same scenario where we have the same publisher 
and three subscribers, we're going to end up with one interface for the publisher and three interfaces for the subscribers, ending with four total interfaces. So for a scenario as simple as this, we're already seeing the benefit of building six interfaces versus four. So what other advantages are to use an ESP? An ESP such as a BizTalk allows us to concentrate and group all of our integrations in one place. That's good because we use one technology to do the same thing over and over. That allows us to reuse our code, to use the same kind of code. That means whatever language that it is that we're implementing, we're going to be able to use over and over. And for extensibility, if someone wants to take over our work, they go to one place, they look at an existing work, and they can extend it. All right, so let's focus a little bit on BizTalk in particular. There are a bunch of tools out there similar to BizTalk, but we're going to focus for a moment on BizTalk. Microsoft BizTalk ships with a bunch of modules. We're going to focus on the engine for the time being. From an infrastructure standpoint, BizTalk allows for high availability, load balance, and allows you to farm out without having to take down the servers. From a development standpoint, Visual Studio is used to do all the development in one place. Two more features. One feature allows you to hold all your configuration pieces. That is connectivity to different systems so that when you go from one environment to another, all you got to do is change that configuration. So the administrator console. This tool allows administrators manage transactions going through the system. That can be live transactions, transactions that are stuck, or transactions that have already executed. So how do I obtain BizTalk server? The first thing you need is a development environment. Typically, you can get this with an, your MSDN subscription. Installing BizTalk server on a development platform can be a little bit tricky, but you can go to r2link.com and download one of our blogs that shows you how to install it. For production environments, it's not as trivial. Why? Because each organization uses this type of system differently. For example, some organizations have high volume, batch type transactions, non-live. Some other ones have low, require low latency. And so for those kind of scenarios and for production type environments, we recommend you to reach out to an expert. This concludes our BizTalk as an Enterprise Service Bus video. Our goal is to be able to provide videos that cover infrastructure, development, and more on the business side. If you feel that these series are helpful to you or a friend, do them a favor, share it with them. Thanks for watching.